I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. This is the story of an unlikely rebel. She broke rules and yielded to change in one of the world's most rigid families. This is the story of Elizabeth II, a queen who might very well be Great Britain's most revolutionary royal. Well, she was a rebel. She was a master of soft power. She might not be remembered as a disruptor, but she was in many ways, because there's a few things that she did which were really unique to her reign. Your Majesty, thank you very much for this very great day for us. Those things included televised ceremonies and tweets, walkabouts and charity work, and a simple proverb, silence is golden, all of which seems pretty ordinary. But that's also the secret to how Queen Elizabeth became one of the most influential leaders on Earth. So she became part of people's lives in a way that previous monarchs weren't able to. I don't think people really realize that because they can't remember who went before her and how they conducted themselves. They might not remember because Queen Elizabeth was the UK's longest reigning royal. And she didn't wait until her later years to bring about change. In fact, one of her most radical innovations happened on her very first day at work. In 1953, Queen Elizabeth agreed to broadcast her coronation live, an event that was previously among the most private of affairs. With the flip of the switch, so began a lifelong modernization of the monarchy. People actually went out and bought televisions just so they could see that moment. She had a big role to play in the emergence of reality TV. Over the years, Queen Elizabeth took advantage of mass media to make monarchy more accessible. From Christmas speeches to social media, This is the time of year. She used each screen in every channel to enter homes across the world. An idea that's easy to take for granted today, but was groundbreaking for her time. I think she was very quick to notice the loss of deference in society and realizing that to remain relevant, she had to connect with more people. Her connection with the public started on screen, but continued with her message that while she led the people, she was among them. It was a tough sell for a multimillionaire who epitomized formality. Yet it was one she managed to make by launching new custom that's so common today, it's impossible to imagine a time when it didn't exist, walking around and meeting people. She started walkabouts, going out to meet the public. These things feel normal to us now, but they didn't happen before she came to the throne. Before Queen Elizabeth, the royal family largely lived behind closed doors and only mingled with others like them. But on an Australian tour in 1970, she took her first walkabout and established a practice that's intrinsic to the monarchy today. The same goes for charity. She changed the role of monarchy by introducing the idea of voluntary service into the official role of monarchy. As Queen Elizabeth revolutionized the monarchy's role, she also cemented her own place among the world's most powerful leaders, with perhaps the most counterintuitive method of all, silence. In her seven decades on the throne, she'd met with American presidents and African dictators and everyone in between. While the actions and impacts of these leaders are as diverse as the countries they come from, Queen Elizabeth met each and every one with the same neutral approach. And in doing so, she managed to spend nearly her entire career above the political fray. She'd been around for such a long time and she wasn't a divisive figure. She represented continuity and stability. And I think she gave Brits and to some extent people in other parts of the world someone to look to in times of crisis and celebration. And that continuity might just have been her most subtle rebellion. As leaders came and went, as empires fell and new unions formed, as political movements swept across nations, it would have been easy to get caught up in the moment and speak out, but holding back took strength. She proved that if you could stay out of politics, stay away from opinions, you can have a long and successful monarchy. I think the only time you really saw her expressing any emotion was with horses, but beyond that, what do we really know about her? Perhaps not much about her personal life, but her public life changed the course of the Commonwealth, and in doing so, left a lasting impression not only on the British monarchy, but the world. Thank you.